For the last few days, I've been watching a bunch of Naked Attraction. You may have seen this. It's a British TV sh dating competition type show in which the person picking a mate out of the possible contestants um, chooses from between a bunch of naked people. And that um, since this is not in the United States of America, they show full, full frontal nudity of both sexes. Uh, it's not exactly a new show. It's first uh, aired in England in 2016, but I am uh, commenting on it because it is currently um, running on and promoted on HBO Max. And also I think that if cultural artifacts of art and entertainment are worthwhile, they are worthwhile whether they are brand or old. Uh, I would say that Naked Attraction is both fascinating and deeply boring. It actually has a lot of what I have imagined, including in, a in some kind of video project of my own, combined with kind of dumb elements from more traditional dating shows. Um, if you haven't seen it, so the way it plays out is there are six colored panels, behind each of which is a naked person, of the gender or genders that appeals to the person who's picking. I looked online and I, people that are getting eliminated one by one are contestants. I'm not sure what to call the person who is the, the prize in a sense in the show. Um, also the one making all the decisions, the contestants really don't do much of anything. So um, first they're fully blocked. Um, the first, the, the person who's trying to choose a date comes out and is and the panels are each raised uh, to about waist level so you can see the legs hips and perhaps most importantly genitals of the person that you are the people that you are considering dating um one person of the six can candidates is eliminated at that stage they raise the doors a little further so you can see the um you know, the chest and torso and make a decision, you know, and the person choosing makes the decision of who to eliminate from there based on who is least attractive. Then they show the faces, they do a couple more eliminations. For the final elimination, um, after which the person has seen everyone's face, heard their voices, um, for the last elimination, there are just two candidates left and the person picking a date comes back out themselves naked and um, picks the person they go on a date with. That's how the game plays. I say game, it is, that's kind of stretching the word. Um, it's also kind of stretching the idea of competition since the people who are competing. In the first couple episodes I've seen, they just sort of stand there and be naked. And um, there's no real effort on their part. In some later episodes, they do some more things like the, like the the uh, show host will have everyone twerk or pretend they're working out or something like that. Um, at each step along the way, the host and the person picking a date um, discuss what they do and don't like about the body parts that are on display, what they're saying. Um, like I said, there's a lot that I like about this. There's uh, There are things I like less, and I'm going to jump right into those. First of all, this should come as no surprise to anyone who knows me and has been following me on various media over the years. I like seeing naked bodies on TV. I like seeing naked bodies pretty much anywhere and especially on TV. I mean, I think that there's just so much taboo around bodies and just normalizing non-sexual naked bodies, I think is a good thing. I really, I mean, I like nudity in sexual situations in movies or TV, but I also just like nudity in non-sexual situations. I like to see people's bodies. Um, I like that they show gay, that they've had gay, straight, and bi people on the show. Um, they've had a man choosing from women. Um, they've had a women, woman choosing from wo women, a woman choosing from both men and women. In the episodes I've sampled, I haven't yet seen a bisexual man choosing between men and women, or um, I have seen a man choosing between men. So I like that they're actually, you know, representing diversity like that, which a lot of 
which traditionally dating shows don't do. Um, I like that there's blunt talk about body parts. I mean, they will the close up on body parts and they're talking about what they do and don't like. And again, I like the idea of demystifying and normalizing bodies in that way. I would prefer it if that blunt talk was not in the context of competition and ranking some bodies above others. And, and though I get to the point, I get the point that what people, but the point of the show is to see what bodies people find attractive from a purely physical standpoint. Uh, but I also think it's silly that it's phrased as a competition. As I said before, the competitors compete by standing there naked for the most part, um, really not putting forth that much effort of any kind. Also, the person who is choosing a date doesn't put in any effort besides making decisions. So again, that's, you know, probably standard among dating reality type shows like The Bachelor or whatever. Um, one thing I would like to see more of is at some parts in the show, people talk about what they like about their own bodies. And I like that. I would just, I would like, again, with the, the mission of normalizing um, demystifying bodies, I would like to celebrate what's good by people saying, oh yeah, I really like my whatever. Um, and I would like to see more of that. So, to some degree, they talk about what they don't. I've seen people talk about what they don't like in their bodies. And I wouldn't mind seeing more of that either, just for the sake, sake of honesty and whatnot. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is that they repeatedly refer to vulvas as vaginas. Like they'll say like, oh, let's take a look at, the, at her vagina. And because they're not putting the woman on an obstetric chair and having her spread her legs, they aren't looking at her vagina. They're looking at her vulva. They're looking at pubic hair if there is that. Um, more women remove pubic hair than not. Um, there have been a few relatively um, full bushes, but even though that, even that's for women who are relatively not very hairy. And um, the way they talk about it, you know, I'm always bothered by the idea that removing pubic hair is the norm and it's sort of some sort of choice to leave it in place. I mean, yes, it is a choice, but um, when I grew up in my day, um, you know, it was just normal to have hair down there. Um, I think about the scene in um, Revenge of the Nerds, a rather a very problematic scene from today's standpoint, but where they're spying on um, the women's locker room or whatever, and um, Booger, I believe it was, Curtis Armstrong says, we want Bush, and I think, you know, young people today, if they even watch Revenge of the Nerds, that's one of those scenes that they wouldn't understand because why would someone want Bush? Um, but, you know, they're asking, they're showing real people the way they look and asking real people their opinions, and most people are less into pubic hair than I am. Um, I would say that everyone on the show, uh, on the episodes I've seen, has been conventionally attractive, um, which is not to say that they look like supermodels. I mean, they, um, you know, they, they're good looking people. Some of that is just because of its television. I mean, some of it is because they've, um, they've chosen the contestants based on elements that the person choosing the date, um, says they like. And so, um, I'm not surprised that they're conven basically conventionally attractive. Uh, um, you know, some of them are more sort of girl next door, boy next door. Like I said, they're not supermodels. Um, within conventionally attractive, there are there's some variety of proportions, um, and you know, bigger breasts, smaller breasts, and whatnot. I haven't seen anyone of the episodes I've seen. I haven't seen anyone on the show that I would call fat. But there have been some that others probably would consider fat. Um, it's not that I think that fat is a bad word. It's a neutral descriptor like tall that is embraced by fat people I know. I wouldn't call these people fat because I think society has a warped idea of what fat is. Um, it's like, oh no, there's soft tissue around someone's midsection. You know, obviously 
you know, the Anita Zempic or something like that. Um, one thing that I haven't seen on the show so far, so, I mean, after the person, people go on a, after they select a date, they go on a date, which they show a little bit of clothes, they're in a bar or something like that. And then they have some after footage of, um, you know, talking about the date, whether they hit it off, whether they're still seeing each other and whatnot. Um, the one thing I would like to see that I haven't yet seen on the show is after interviews where the contestants or the, or the person picking the date talk about what it was like to take part, uh, how it felt to just be naked like that in front of a bunch of other people and knowing that they're in front of potentially millions of TV viewers and wondering if that affected their, how they feel about their bodies. Um, everyone on the show generally, I would say, looks comfortable, um, which, you know, even if being naked in this sort of public way is new to them, there's still people who volunteered to be on a show where they knew that their bodies would be on display. So it's it's not entirely shocking that they would be relatively comfortable. Also, I'm sure that by the time you go through, you know, hair and makeup and rehearsals, if they do rehearsals, but, you know, by the time you actually get on the show, um, just not having your clothes on probably isn't as shocking as it was when you show up in the morning to start shooting. Um, I have dreamed about making some kind of video that has elements of this. I would love, I would love to make videos where you get a group of people together um, naked and discuss what they like about their bodies, what they like about other people's bodies, but doing so without it being a competition, without saying what you like about bodies as part of putting someone's body above another body it, um, and whatnot, having more more real discussions. So you're seeing the people beyond just the physical body. Um, I picture it being sort of more sort of like a, a, a consciousness raising group kind of thing. Um, almost if that, if that doesn't put an image in your head, it would be um, like a book club except instead of everyone having a book, everyone is naked and have a discussion. Um, I would love to see and hear what people think about their bodies and other people's, what they feel. Talking about cultural programming, like everyone has different, you know, backgrounds, whether it's their, their parents, their religion, all sorts of things that go into it. Um, as I said, I would love to do this as a video, but I think an audio only podcast would also um, be very interesting. In that case, people would sit together um, all naked and having this discussion. However, only audio would be recorded. So you get, so you don't see the bodies, but you get everyone's insights. Um, I think that would also be interesting. And um, we could probably get people to uh, participate who aren't comfortable recording themselves to be seen on video, but they would be comfortable with you know, a select group of people meeting up that way. Um, there could even be a setting where not everyone is required to be naked. Um, you know, you could start out not naked. Uh, if you become comfortable enough to remove things as the discussion goes on, you could. I've found that, you know, when in clothing optional settings, some people um, start out thinking they're not going to be naked, but by the end of it, they, there are. If it did it that way, I would want to have some um, some people in the group agreeing to start out naked because it would be a lot easier for the shyer people to start removing clothes if someone is naked before them. Um, uh, so, that, you know, you'd have some people commit to being naked ahead of time. I imagine someone being a moderator, perhaps myself, who would start the discussion and sort of stir it up when there's dead space, but otherwise keep a light hand. Um, I'm not imagining that someone is teaching a class or giving a seminar. I'm imagining a discussion all around, but, you know, there are dead spots in, in, um, in silences and conversation. There are naturally lulls. Um, perhaps things get out of hand. People, someone's taking over the conversation or there's some kind of misunderstanding. Having someone there who can just sort of 
put the brakes on, I think would be, you know, a very good thing for this. Um, so, um, wrapping up, it uh, the show is currently streaming on HBO Max. Um, you can also find a lot of full episodes on YouTube. Um, I guess it gets to stay on YouTube for the same reason it gets to stay on the um, television channel it's run on in England, because while there is while there is nudity, um, and they talk about sex to some degree, no one is doing sexual things to each other or by themselves. Um, like I said, it's, um, it's a show that's interesting to watch an episode of. After that, it starts really seeming the same. I mean, there's, um, everyone has slightly different opinions and the contestants have different, slightly different bodies and all of that, but basically, it's all the same because you're not you're not getting much into people's personal backstories. You don't have that kind of variety that you have um, in some dating shows. And um, also, like I said, there's no the competition isn't very competitive or very active. You know, some people just get chosen. And um, yeah, it's uh, check it out if you want to watch a bunch of naked people on TV.